Hi everyone, welcome back in the series of Spring Boot with MySQL. In the previous videos, we have learned what is Spring Boot, why we need it, and what is dependency injection. So in this video, we will explore what is AOP and how it works. When we are writing any code, there are a lot of other things which we have to keep in mind. For example, security. Just to check if our user is authenticated or not. Then we have business logic. What is the actual logic that we are writing? Then we have logging. Logging is used to keep track of what is going on in the application. And if any error occurs, we come to know like what happened. Then we have validations. That thing is depend on the business logic that we are writing. What all validation should be there. So these are some of the points that we have to keep in mind. And these things are called cross cutting concerns. So now let's talk about why do we need AOP. To understand why we need AOP, let's take an example. Suppose you are building an e-commerce site where you can select the item and you can place your order. So let's talk about the place order method. Here we are checking if the user is authenticated or not. Then in the second step we are logging the activity. That means we are logging that place order method is going to execute. So in the next step we are validating the items that are present in the cart if they are available or not. After that we have the actual business logic which will place the order. Then again we are logging the status. Here we are logging the status of order. What happened with the order. So if we want to write a clean code, this authentication part, logging part, validation part, it shouldn't be there in the place order method, right? Only the functionality that is related to place order should be there. So due to this reason, AOP is used. Now we understood why we need AOP or aspect oriented programming. Let's talk about what it is. So according to the previous example that we have discussed, we have four parts, right? The first one is authentication. Then we are doing some validation check and we are doing the logging part as well. And the fourth part is the actual business logic that we are implementing. So these can be separated into four individual methods, right? So let's separate this code into four different methods. So the first method is authenticate user. So this will take care of authentication part. Second, we have validation part. And for that we have a validate order method. Then we have logging part and the log user activity method will take care of that. And now the place order code will be there in the place order method only. So now our code is clean and it is separated according to the functionality. Now the thing is to merge it. Now let's talk about some of the important concepts of AOP and how and when the code will be merged. We have multiple concepts in AOP. So let's talk about the most popular ones. The first one is advice. Then we have join point. Then we have aspect. And the fourth one is point cut. Apart from it, we have one target object as well, which we'll discuss later. So let's take an example and understand what all these four things are. So according to the example, we have one method that is check even odd. It takes one parameter that is an integer and it returns a string. According to the condition, if the number is even, it will return even. If the number is odd, it will return odd. If the number is negative, it will return negative. Otherwise, it will return zero. Suppose we want to log this activity. Suppose we want to log the check even odd method is going to execute. For that, just take an example. We have one class that is log manager. Inside that we have one method that is log user activity. And inside that we are logging the activity that is user is calling check even odd method. Here what we want to achieve is if the check even odd method will be called before that we want to execute this log user activity method. We want to log it. So this is our scenario. Let's understand these concepts now. 
So let's talk about advice first. So advice is the code for the cross cutting concern. For example, here we have log user activity method. So this method is an advice. Then the second concept that we have is join point. Join point is the actual code for which advice is given, which means here we have this check even odd method, right? So this is our join point. Then the third thing is aspect. Aspect is the class which contains all the advice. So suppose we have some other logging things as well. So in that case, we can place those methods in this log manager class. So here the log manager class will be the aspect. Now we are aware of what code we are executing and for that code, what advice we'll need. So the next question is when that advice will be called. For that we have point cut. Point cut defines when the advice will be executed. For example, here we can say whenever the execution of check even odd method will be there at that time, we want to run our advice. Now you are aware of what is advice, what is join point, what is aspect and what is point cut. So let's talk about types of advice now. So we have some types of advices just to make sure when these advices will be called. We categorize advice into five categories, which are before, after returning, after throwing, after finally, and around. So the first type is before. Advices of this type will be executed before execution of join point and it can't prevent execution of join point. Then we have the second category that is after returning. The advices of this category will be executed after the join point is executed and when the code is executed successfully without any exception or any error. So the next category is after throwing. Advices in this categories will be called after the execution of join point and if any error is thrown. Then the fourth category is after finally. As the name suggests, this is also going to be called after the execution of join point, but this will be called every time. For example, we have finally block in exception handling, right? Similar in this case, this will be called in every cases. So the fifth category that we have is around. These advices will be called before and after and we can decide whether to proceed to the join point or not. And using this, we can return some data or we can throw an exception without executing the join point. Due to this behavior, this is considered the most powerful advice type. So now we have understood the major concepts of AOP and all types of advice. Let's talk about how it internally works. As I said earlier, apart from aspect, join point, advice and point cut, we have one more thing that is target object, right? So whenever we use AOP, a proxy object will be created. So this object is the target object and Java uses proxy design pattern to create this object. We will explore some of the design patterns in the upcoming series on design pattern for now. You can just keep in mind like an object will be created. The second step is some code will be injected based on the advice type. Suppose we have one before advice. So that will be injected and we have another advice that is after advice. So that will also injected into that code. So this is how the sum method will look like after injecting the code. And one more thing, this process of injecting the code is called code weaving. 
So in this video you have learned what is aspect oriented programming and how it internally works. We will implement AOP in upcoming videos in this series. If you have used AOP in your previous project, I want you to write for what concern you have used that in the comment section. So in the next video we will learn what we are developing and we will go through the architecture of that application.